reflection is 100,000 times more powerful than listening. And experience is 100,000 times more powerful than reflecting. You can cultivate the capacity to see the end in any beginning. We are back with another reflection on the daily Vedantic. And I'm happy you are with me. Today's reflection. Okay, I said I'm happy you're with me, but you're not actually with me. And to be honest, I don't even feel like you're with me. I'm not quite there yet in this whole podcasting game. I feel quite isolated, um, just geographically right now as I record this. I'm appreciative of it because it allows me to actually record the episode, but I ain't going to lie to you and say I'm happy you're with me because I actually don't feel that emotion, but I hope that you're happy I'm with you auditorily or visually if we're on the YouTubes. This episode, all of that aside, this episode is called Wave Selection. You're probably wondering, you probably clicked on it and said, why would a philosophy episode be called Wave Selection? Let me tell you why. The term wave selection comes from a pro surfer, Koa Rothman, one of the best surfers in the world. He's awesome. And he was asked, what do you wish 15-year-old Koa Rothman knew that you know now at about 30 in your career? And without hesitation, he said, oh, if I could go back 15 years back and improve one thing about my approach to surfing, it would be wave selection. wasn't about fear of surfing 20, 30 foot waves, 50 foot waves. It was not a technique. It was not about different equipment, different boards. It wasn't about different secret spots. It was just helping that 15 year old choose better waves. Clarity. reorienting your decisions around clear outcomes based on what you can currently see. It's not choosing the most epic waves. It's just selecting the waves to ride. Because if you're a surfer and you choose the wrong waves, not only do you lose a competition, do you not get the ride of your life, but more than that, on a 30-foot face of water, three-story building of water, You could be sent to the hospital for several weeks, worse, sent to the morgue. Maybe even worse than being sent to the hospital for a couple of weeks is irreparable damage to your body to where you can't surf like you used to. Wave selection. That's what he said. As we touch on in, in these episodes, the definition of wisdom then Vedanta is the capacity to see the end in the beginning. In our lives, I won't, I won't imagine that many of the listeners are surfers, but we are all choosing waves constantly in life. This or that job, this or that part of the city, this city over another, this or that spouse. We are choosing waves multiple times a day. Leaving some because, well, they scare us and, and maybe they will hurt us. Leaving others because we say, oh, this is a sure thing. And then you get totaled. Total wipeout. Wave selection. That is wisdom. The capacity to see the end in the beginning. With surfing, maybe wave selection at this point because maybe there aren't that many great visual tutors out there to help you accelerate your ability to choose waves outside of just getting out in the water. But when it comes to life, when it comes to 
worldview or philosophy. There are so many ways to accelerate that capacity to see the end in the beginning without needing to go through experience, without needing to say, no, I just need to experience it all. I need to experience 10,000 waves before I'm going to have amazing wave selection. This philosophy is, is quite clear that through listening, then through reflection, you actually can, cul can cultivate just through listening and reflection every day. You can cultivate the capacity to see the end in any beginning. You don't need to go through experience. If anything, you get to that experience, that wisdom, not through experience, but through studying and reflection, through listening, through conversation, discussion, most importantly, through reflection. You can actually cultivate the wave selection in life through doing exactly what you're doing right now. And maybe it's listening to this, finding something that speaks to you, writing it down and saying, all right, well, I heard it, but it was in one ear. It's probably going to be out the other. So I'm actually going to reflect on it. I'm not saying anything that I've said is going to hit you like that. But if it does, then the best service you can do for that cultivation of wisdom is to reflect on it. This philosophy emphasizes reflection over listening so much. It's said that reflection is 100,000 times more powerful than listening. And experience is 100,000 times more powerful than reflecting. But just listening it, hearing it, we all know the times we heard an awesome quote. Maybe you saw it on Instagram, you double tapped it, and then the next day you couldn't remember for the life of you. In one year, out the other, that is what happens with anything we listen to. But when we reflect on it for a second or third or fourth or fifth day, it starts to become a part of us. It starts to become that wave selection. Any of these principles, it could be the actual, just the, the concept of wisdom is the capacity to see the end in the beginning that you reflect on over and over and over again. And then you realize, oh, the thing that I could work on most right now, perhaps over anything else, is in my own life, wave selection, which waves to take and cultivate capacity to see what are good waves, what are bad waves. Which ones are going to take me on the ride of my life? Which, are going to, which ones are going to take me to where I want to be, where I want to go? Which ones out of selfish desire or fear are going to total me or those around me and lead to just a massive and sadly unnecessary wipeout? wave selection. What are the waves that you see right now that you might take? But through reflection, through contemplation, through creating space in your life to really think about it, it might be a terrible wave to take. We don't take waves that are terrible because they look terrible. There will be something, a few things that seem pretty awesome about them. That's why a surfer will take a wave. 15-year-old Koa could look at a wave and say, oh, there's some awesome aspects of this one. I'm going to take it. But 30-year-old Koa sees the same wave and says, nope, there are a few things that are just off about that one. There are tiny signs that younger me or someone on the beach would never be able to see, but Wise me can actually see, now that's a terrible wave to take. But younger him thought it would have been an awesome one. But that clarity and that wisdom exists. What is that set of waves that you think, well, these are pretty good. But maybe I shouldn't take them. And what might be the wave that you look at and say, okay, that has some aspects that are maybe not ideal, but that's the wave I should take. 
as Joseph Campbell, the noted Vedantin and the extremely highly regarded 20th century mythologist once said, the treasure you seek is in the cave you least want to enter. Surfing, you could actually accidentally use this analogy and think, oh, it's about self-preservation. But philosophy is about self-transcendence. So maybe going into the cave that you least want to enter, that's the wave to take. Going into that decision that you least want to make, but you know you should. Maybe that's the wave to select. Even just hearing that brilliant articulation of the treasure you seek is in the cave you least want to enter. That's clarifying. But I'll also add that when we surrender to that cave that we least want to enter, but we know we should surrender to perhaps a duty bound existence, immediate peace follows. Who doesn't want a wave that will take you to immediate peace? Well, it's the person that doesn't know which wave to select. Because as I said, that wave requires a surrender to a duty bound existence. 15 year old me would have never would in a million years would have never taken a wave of duty bound surrender. And I'm not saying. I'm riding that wave all day long. But each time that I do see these waves of, all right, selfish pleasure, joy, impermanent satisfaction, and I see another wave of duty, service, action, deliberate action, man, after a while, after nearly a decade of reflection, Without batting an eye, those are the waves that look so much more appealing. Through reflection, through experience, knowing how satisfying those waves are. And all of this comes down to seeing the end in the beginning, which helps us all in life with wave selection. That's today's reflection on the Daily Vedanta. We'll see you next time.